Outer Wilds is often lauded for its handcrafted solar system. So in this video, I'm going to nitpick the handcrafted solar system to death and rank each celestial body in a tier list based on how realistic I think it is. Now since Outer Wilds is very much a game about exploring and learning about the solar system, this will have major spoilers for both the DLC and the base game. I'll start by getting some obvious nitpicks out of the way. Planets are big in real life. The planets orbit too close together. The red giant phase is 1 billion years, not 5 minutes. I'm gonna mostly ignore these issues of scale, otherwise everything is obviously just unrealistic. Anyway, let's start with the center of the solar system, the sun. In the museum, we are told the sun fuses hydrogen into helium in its core. This means it is a main sequence star, a pretty common categorization that includes most stars in our galaxy and our own sun. We can look up what type of star it is based on its color using the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram, and I'd put it over here as a K-type main sequence star. The next thing the museum tells us is the sun will go supernova when it dies, which it does. However, only massive stars, those on the bluer end of the sequence, make supernovae in real life. This K-type star would instead die by shedding its outer layers into a planetary nebula and turning into a white dwarf. This would still be bad for the Harthians, but it is not a supernova, so the sun loses points there. I'll chalk this up to artistic license. Saying the sun will go supernova sounds a lot cleaner than saying the sun will shed its outer layers to form a planetary nebula, so I'm putting it in A tier. It's realistic with some artistic license. Next up, we have the Hourglass Twins. There's this one video I saw by Slorp where he discusses this, so I'll just link that here, why not? For my part, I'll at least say yes, binary planets exist, those being planets which orbit a common center of mass between the two of them. Pluto and its moon Charon are a good example in real life. The Earth-Moon system also orbits a barycenter, one that is almost 75% of the way to the surface of the Earth, so it's not quite a true binary, but it gets pretty close. As for the sand moving back and forth, eh, there are contact binaries where two stars are physically in contact with each other. You can also have binary stars where one of them is accreting mass from the other, where it wouldn't necessarily be just a funnel like this, but you'd expect a sort of accretion disk as well. So okay, I can generally buy the idea of one planet pulling matter off the surface of the other, however I don't buy that it could pull only sand up while leaving the rock intact. I also don't think that the cycle where sand flows back and forth could happen. Maybe you can try to argue that the gravitational influence from the sun or maybe one of the other planets is enough to reverse the direction of the sand flow. I just don't think you're gonna find that happening on a planet in real life. C tier. It is based on a real thing, but is ultimately unrealistic. Timber Hearth is of course the most standard looking planet of the bunch, being very Earth-like. The main difference is, uh, the core is empty. By reading in-game text, we're told that the Harthians evolved from little salamanders into sentient bipedal fish people over the course of 200,000 years, and this might explain why. Because the lack of a molten core and thus lack of an electromagnetic field around the planet has left them being bombarded by solar radiation at an alarming rate. When inside the core, you experience zero gravity. This is a reference to the Shell Theorem, where Isaac Newton says that within a spherically symmetric shell there is no net gravitational force exerted by the shell on anything inside of it. When in the shell you are equally pulled on in all directions and thus experience zero gravity. However, we should highlight the word symmetric in that sense. Timber Hearth is anything but symmetric with huge valleys and massive mountains. We want to be even more pedantic since Timber Hearth exerts gravity proportional to 1 over r instead of 1 over r squared. The Shell Theorem doesn't even hold. Still, this planetary feature is based on a real theorem. And it's cool. So I'll let it slide and call it based in reality. B tier because, man, you really need that electromagnetic field. While we're at Timber Hearth, let's look at its moon, the Adel Rock. It looks like a moon to me. It even has a big impact crater on the far side, protecting Timber Hearth from danger, much like our own moon in real life. Although the, the crater is so large, you, you might expect the moon to have just exploded. 
It's also tidally locked to the planet, meaning one side always faces towards it, just like our moon in real life. I'll give it A tier. It's just a very standard analog to our own moon, but maybe it should have exploded. Next up is Brittle Hollow. So for this one, uh, no. Just, just no. What, what holds these plates a land up? Magic? Wishes? Sure, we could bring back Shell Theorem and say that a, a black hole sitting perfectly in the center of a spherically symmetric shell would remain in an unstable equilibrium until perturbed, but uh, I think it's getting plenty perturbed here already. Let's just say it's, it's, it's a bad, bad, evil planet. It, make, it makes no sense. Zero out of ten. Looks really cool though, and I love it. Ten out of ten on that front gonna give it E tier, not F, if only because I guess you could put a black hole in the center of a shell and look at it for a millisecond before it moved away from the unstable equilibrium position and destroyed the planet. And again, let's take a quick look at its moon, Hollow's Lantern. The game tells us that increased activity from the sun has caused the volcanoes on the moon to erupt more frequently. The real life analog to this would be Jupiter's moon Io, where tidal forces from Jupiter cause it to be covered in volcanic activity. However, that's due to gravitational forces and not radiation or electromagnetism or anything, so it doesn't really line up. Still, volcanic moons are a thing. Maybe that black hole is pulling some weight on that front, so I'll give it B tier. Next up is the largest planet in the solar system, Giant's Deep. At first glance, it appears to be the outer wilds equivalent to a gas giant. But then you go inside and find a giant ocean, which planets like Jupiter Decidedly, do not have, unless we're talking oceans of liquid metallic hydrogen. I've never seen an ocean of liquid metallic hydrogen myself, but I don't think this is what they look like. This is, however, similar to a hypothetical class of planets called Haitian worlds. Are they still hypothetical? Has, has James Webb data not confirmed any of these yet? I, I don't actually know. Anyway, the, the name Haitian is a combination of hydrogen and ocean. This is because these planets would have a thick hydrogen envelope over top of a liquid water ocean. Giant's Deep largely fits this description. Realistically, the ocean would be shallower, and instead of having a tiny core made out of coral, you'd expect a thick mantle of ice, but well, that'd just make for boring gameplay. You'd also definitely expect this thick atmosphere to lead to some massive storms, much like we see in the game. Even the floating islands are based in reality, since apparently pumice rafts are a thing that can create quote-unquote floating islands. Pumice can float because it's so light and porous, however that also means it can soak up water, causing it to eventually sink. So maybe the islands get dried out by the heat of re-entry when they get thrown into space by tornadoes. I don't, I don't think that part can happen in real life. So, I would say this planet is based in reality, but actually Haitian worlds weren't yet theorized when Outer Wilds came out, so they kind of just got lucky on that front. B tier. I, I would have given it A tier, but I mean, the floating islands get thrown into space by tornadoes. I, I just can't overlook that. Let's look at our last moon now. The Quantum Moon. No. That's not how quantum mechanics works. E tier, because at least quantum mechanics exists. I, I can give them that. And now our last planet, Dark Bramble. No, that's not how plants work. F tier, and, and not just because the anglerfish are the stuff of my nightmares. Let's get some honorable mentions out of the way. These planets just give us way less to go off of, but I still think they're worth mentioning. First up, the ringed planet in the DLC. That just gets S tier because, as far as I know, that's just Saturn but blue. I, I can buy the existence of Saturn but blue. Similarly, for the stranger's home moon, that gets S tier. I can buy the existence of a habitable moon. Another honorable mention is the ice planet from before Dark Bramble made it explode. <laughs> Based on the frozen jellyfish we find in ice, we can conclude that this icy world had a subsurface ocean capable of hosting life, which now thrives on Giant's Deep. I'll call this one based in reality since there are a number of icy moons in our solar system with possible subsurface oceans that we can only hope have a bunch of alien jellyfish in them. So this one gets A tier. I docked a point because it exploded into a giant plant thing and, and I don't think Europa is going to do that, but I, you know, I could be wrong. Speaking of icy places exploding, I'll give the interloper an A. The retrograde orbit it has nicely reflects how it is a captured interstellar object, although its perfect inclination is pretty unrealistic. As for the ghost matter core, I'll ignore that. 
on you know the one hand ghost matter is probably not real and yes i know it's based on dark matter but i don't know that dark matter works like this in real life uh, but on the other hand i'll say that planet killing comets uh, probably are pretty real so i think that cancels out in that regard i'll say that ghost matter is thematically realistic if not actually realistic now this last part is where I spoil literally the ending to the game, so if, if you ignored the first spoiler warning, please reconsider now, okay? Cool. And finally, I lied before, this is the real last planet, the Eye of the Universe. So the Eye of the Universe orbits the Sun from incredibly far away, mirroring some real-world theories about a hypothetical Planet 9, sorry Pluto, that could orbit the Sun from way far out, the Eye of the Universe signal is also pretty clearly based on the cosmic microwave background, which is a real-life background sort of glow across the entire universe, which dates back to only a few hundred thousand years after the Big Bang. And now lastly, the idea at the end of the game that after the universe ends, another is created in its place is similar to the Big Bounce cosmological model that suggests that the expansion of the universe, which Hornfels explains in the observatory, so this also happens in the Outer Wilds universe, is followed by the universe collapsing back down onto itself before expanding again, and another Big Bang over and over forever. So that's all neat. So is the planet realistic? No. That's not how quantum mechanics works. I don't think in real life there are wormholes that take you through the, the, the weird quantum foam dimension and then, and then you watch the universe die. Also, I, I asked a cosmologist once, and, and he said the, the Big Bounce theory is, is disproven, and it's, it's not real. So, I don't even know where to place this on the tier list. Let's just say it's, it's in a quantum superposition of all possible tiers. So anyway, that's the video. Let me know in the comments if you disagree with any of these placements. If you thought this was interesting, go watch some of my other videos, nitpicking the physics of Outer Wilds or explaining how the game works. Also, let me know if you have any suggestions. I was thinking of maybe doing something like this for a Kerbal Space Program, but those planets are mostly all very clean analogs for real-life planets, so it might be too plain, I don't know. Okay, bye.